Hello and welcome to another review here at Frontline Model Lobbies. And today we've got the F4G Wild Weasel by Zokimura. And let's face it, there has been a bit of a battle between Zokimura and Meng, which one is going to come out first. Uh, some people, or what I've heard, um, the Meng one is arriving, but this one has actually arrived in my hands before the Meng one. So, I'm going to stop beating them out the bush, and let's have a look inside the box. Alrighty then, so let's face it, we've been waiting for a new tooled F4G Phantom 2 Wild Weasel in 48th for quite some time. And yes, I know some of you might be thinking that the Azigawa kit is still not a bad kit in a way, but let's face it, it's got nothing on this one I don't think. And not only that, um, the price of the Azigawa kits was creeping up on eBay and other other websites and this, that and the other. So, yeah, that is one thing. And also, creeping right behind this one is the Meng version. So we've got two flavours of this one. And it would have been nice to have both of them together, but either way. So just a bit of a blurb on this one. Um, the F4G is actually an F4E. So the F4E formed the basis of this version. It was the most technically advanced F4 Phantom. And the reason why it's a G is because it's got no gun at the front and it was replaced with an APR 38 radar honing and warning receiver. I've just Googled that, as you can probably tell. So anyway, enough about that. Like the box art, quite striking. We'll be putting that on my wall, I think. So, let's have a look inside the box, shall we? And let's see if I can get this one open in one go. There we go. Now, as you can see, the box is pretty much full of plastic all the way through. Quite a lot of sprues. A lot of parts, let's face it. Going all the way through. All the fuel tanks. And this, that, and the other, and the flaps and everything, and quite a large booklet, so with some cool schemes in there. So if you bear me two seconds, and I'll show you the instructions. Okay, so a good place to start as any is the instructions. Now, Zokimura, I've done quite a few flavours of this one. So we've had the D, the C, the E, the E, J, and now we've got the G version. So... I'm going to sort of gloss over the areas which have been copy and pasted over and over time on different reviews and sort of concentrate on the areas of the G. Now, straight into it, shall we? Zokimura, I've done quite a lot of blurb, as you can see. Uh, that's their thing, so we'll gloss over that. One thing to note as well, that the colour callouts is by Vallejo. So just bear that in mind. If you like Vallejo, then you can crack on. So you go straight into the cockpit. Now, the cockpit, again, um, I'm not too genned up on this one, but I think that obviously it's going to be a different flavour to the E, with it being a G and um, predominantly a Wild Weasel version. One thing to note is that this front segment here, I think... Um, it. it, it when did that change? One thing to note is this segment here, which um, I'm guessing somebody might put me right, but is the APR 38 radar honing and warning receiver later to replace by the 47. If that's wrong, please write that in the comments and tell me I'm a total knob. But either way, so that is all that going together, and then it's straight into the engine. Now, you've seen this all before. If you've built one, then fair enough. It's uh, self-explanatory, putting all the engines together, putting all that together, putting intakes on, putting the burner cans, putting all the um, flapperons and the ailerons together, making sure all that's in the right place, putting the front slats and flats, flaps together, putting the uh, rear um, arrestor hook on, the uh, horizontal stabilizers and you've got three different flavors as you normally get from the other kits putting the all the landing gear together as you can see literally there's tons of it the front bank seats go in 
and then you've got the canopies going and again like all the rest of the kits you've got two halves or two types shall i say also it won't be an f4 phantom we'll have to teach fuel tanks putting the um, pylons together and then you've got your aim sevens as well going on there in the kit there's actually um, sidewinders so pylons going together putting your agm 88 arms putting them on and then you put your ecm pod on the front and your uh, ladder so you've got your sprue call outs and as you can see there's quite a lot blanked out now whether this might be from the e which i'm thinking it might be or it might be another version that be coming out but i think it's more the, from the e so obviously you can see there's a lot of parts that you won't be using and either way so that is the instructions okay so now time for the sprues as you can fully well see um what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the way that i'm going to review this one um mainly because there's been a lot of reviews out there of this particular version of aircraft not obviously not the g but we'll again we'll look at the actual specific parts for the g um but one way i'm going to look at this is if i was going to buy the kit and what would i change so like say the bang seat or the cockpit or this that, and the other and especially looking at the actual airframe so with that in mind let's look at this one first which is sprue a and as you can see the actual uh, panel lining and rivet detail is very nicely done, very restrained. It looks bigger on camera, but actually looking at it with my own Mark One eyeball looks actually very nicely done. There is a bit of a texturing, as you can see, um, but from what I can remember, Lenny at RTB Models has built the EJ version um, and he didn't particularly have a problem after priming. So it's not a major issue. Um, and the same goes with the uh, front intake shrouds at the front. So again, very nicely done. On the inside there, you've got some injection pin marks for the cockpit, but I don't think you see it. If you do, it's quick sight for the sanding stick and it should be fine. So that is the first one. The next sprue is, from what I can see, is sprue H. And again, the bottom half of the fuselage is very similar if not exactly the same, is in detail and how the panel lining and rivet detail is very restrained. Uh, one thing I do like um, when I get finally round to it is you can see the rivet and um, panel line detail, can't even speak, but is these outer winglets here um, as they are, from what you can see, one piece. Um, the only downside is there'll be a seam line going all the way around, but a quick swipe with a sanding stick uh, or a knife blade and you should be fine. So no problem there whatsoever on that sprue. Looks pretty good, actually. Now, the next one is obviously an area where us modelers, especially aircraft modelers, would like to change or improve is the burner cans. Um, and this is obviously no exception, but and I say but, they don't look too bad. Um, one area that I don't like is these that you have to cut off from the inside and sand down. It's just another ball ache. But either way, they don't look too bad. But obviously, an aftermarket set would actually bring this area up. Again, one other area that is very nice straight out of the box is the engines themselves. So a bit of wiring on there and you've glued it all together and it should look absolutely awesome. The other downside to the kit, and this is probably most F4 Phantoms, is that it's two halves and it's actually, well, these injection pin marks in there. So yeah, not great. And again, it's on the landing gear there. But either way, just a quick swipe with the sanding stick. That is not a major problem. Neither is that, to be honest with you. Um, it's just a case that it's two halves going together. Next up is Sprue M. And this is another area of interest that some modelers and probably, well, not probably, I've done it in the past, is replace the wheelbase. Um, but on this kit, I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. 
because as you can see, the detail is very nicely done on this one. Uh, a bit of wiring in there and you should be good to go, to be honest with you. Um, one other area of interest is actually over here where you've got all these little finely drilled holes for the air intake system. And I think it's something to do with the laminar flow of the air, just passes a bit better across the airframe. Um, and again, you've got a complete nose one piece, which is nicely done to be honest with you. One downside and one letdown to this sort of area is where these doors are. And you've got some ejection pin marks in those holes and the same goes with that gear bay door. Uh, whether, if you're gonna see it, that's another question, but that gear bay door, you don't see it. But either way, again, there's no flash or no problems on this one whatsoever, as you can see, so very nicely done. Next up is a sprue C, and this is another area which, as a modeler, I would probably replace, and that is the bang seats. But with this kit, I don't think it's gonna be that much of a problem, as you can see there. The detail is very nicely done on all the halves, um, can't complain with that. Yeah, the, the cushions might not be brilliant, but either way, um, everything else looks pretty nice on that one. Um, the only downside is you haven't got any seat belts, so you're gonna have to get an aftermarket set for that or scratch build your own either way. And again, that is uh, other parts of the wheel bays. Um, not a problem on that one or whatsoever. And either is the cockpit lid on the cockpit top half section. A um, bit of wiring in there, not too bad to be honest with you. A little bit extra wiring on the back of here and you're good to go, I think. But again, another nice sprue. Moving neatly on to sprue J and you've got the cockpit sections here. So you've got the side console pieces and this, that and the other. You've got the nose section there, as you can see. I'm not quite sort of sure whether that's the right shape. I'm guessing somebody might say that it's not or it is either way but again the cockpit parts as you can see are awesome the raised detail on there is very nicely done um, even if you paint it or you actually put on the decal it's either up to you to be honest with you and again i'm guessing this will be different to the e version the actual instrument panel but either way very nicely done again and one other area that I'll probably improve is the missiles. So the AGM-88 Harm, I'd probably get some aftermarket ones, to be honest with you. But either way, if you wanted to do them out of the box, I don't think it would be that much of a problem. Second to last on the major sprues is sprue N. And this sprue obviously has got all your weapons on there and your ladder. Um, I'm just showing you this mainly for the weapons, basically. Um, so you've got the AIM-9s, AIM-7, AIM sorry, and the AIM-9s. And you've got the different seeker heads, I'm guessing, and the fins for the AIM-9s, which I've never seen before myself. But either way, as you can see, where you don't see them, generally speaking, there's injection pin marks, and where you will see them, there isn't any. So again, another nice sprue. And last for the major sprues is sprue S. And obviously you've got your ESEM pods on there. You don't use that one, you use that one on this one. But I'm sure on some Azigawa versions, the F4G Phantom 2, you can use that one. So I'm not quite sure why it's telling you not to use that one in instructions. It's blanked out, but it gives it you. So make sure you look at your reference material. And these multi-ejection racks, I don't think it will have them in there, but it has got them included in the uh, in the kit which look were very very nice to be honest with you and i can't go away without showing you the clear parts now as you might be able to see there is some scratches in there it's nothing major a bit of a sand down with um, a sanding stick a sponge sanding sponge and it should get them out there a bit of polish and it should be fine one thing to note though is that they are uber clear and they are awesome and like I said earlier, you've got two different flavours. So you've got this full piece that you can put with the canopy closed or you can have the canopies open. But either way, so that is the sprues.
And there we have it. That is the review for Zokimura's F4G Phantom 2 Wild Weasel in 48 scale. And wow. Let's face it. Out of the box, this kit is fantastic. Yes, you might need a couple of aftermarket pieces, maybe some photo at seat belts, this, that and the other. But to be honest with you, I can't see anything wrong with this kit going together and looking fantastic on the bench, whatever setting, whether it be at home or at a model show, what have you. Um, let's face it, Meng, their kit is probably going to be just as good, but we'll have to wait and see. So... Me personally, I can't wait to build one of these kits. And it's an F4 Phantom by Zokimura, so it is virtually the same across the board. So me and Lenny RTB models, we're going to be doing the D version. So I'll sort of see similar how this will go together. But anyway, if you want one of these, please go onto our website and have a look. Um, I think we've got three left. Anyway, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time. Cheerio. Thank you.